Next, when we do a neurological exam, if we're trying to localize a spinal cord problem or uh, a lesion to the neuromuscular system, then we need to evaluate the spinal reflexes. When you're looking at an animal which is very stressed, then the more, your most useful reflex will be the flexor withdrawal reflex. My next tip relates to assessing the spinal reflexes. We assess the spinal reflexes to localize within the uh, spinal cord. And uh, uh, this tip is that the withdrawal reflex is going to be your most useful reflex in this regard, especially in a fractious uh, or anxious animal. Um, uh, the other more common reflex that we will use is, of course, the patella reflex and other muscle tendon um, reflexes. The withdrawal reflex is where you pinch the toe and you get flexion of all of the joints. And it's not to be confused with deep pain perception, which is where you uh, make that stimulus quite painful and you get a be behavioural reaction from the animal and it shows integrity of the spinal cord. So here we have a cat with uh, a neuropathy um, and it has a very weak withdrawal reflex. And this is a super, super lovely cat, um, being very anxious in the consulting room. And the more handling you did, the more difficult it was to handle him. So he was he was very, very chilled uh, by comparison if you just let him uh, be on the um, on the floor um, and you could gain far more information uh, about him uh, from this. And we can see that uh, he has a very plantigrade stance, um, uh, which uh, in itself is is not normal. And we can also get the impression that he has some muscle atrophy. Um, we can also see that he's, he's got a plantigrade stance because it's affecting his um, all four limbs. But like many animals with a neuropathy, the uh, nerves that are the longest are affected uh, the first. So uh, that would be the sciatic nerve is one of the longest nerves. So just coming in here to try and assess that. Not quite successful that time. You can see the muscle atrophy in this cat or parent, and then just coming in again to do that. And we get the impression with that cat, it's more easy to feel than it is to see that the cat was unable to flex the hock. And that's quite important um, because they need to flex all of the joints. So though we saw some response there, because the cat has a more distal problem um, because of it, the way that its neuropathy is, it was unable to flex the hock when I did that. And so that very, very quickly uh, helps me to establish that they were dealing with a sciatic nerve issue in that, uh, in that puss cat without having to put an awful lot of, uh, of hands on the cat. And I'm just showing you there. Um, the uh, pronounced muscle atrophy uh, in this puss cat. So um, why, is, why do we use reflexes to localise uh, to a region of the spinal cord? What's the whole point? Well, we use whether or not an animal has an upper or a lower motor neuron lesion simply as a means to localise the lesion. So people get incredibly confused by this, and it's understandable. I can remember being very confused by this as a veterinary student. In fact, uh, this is one of the reasons that inspired me to do more neurology and end up being a, a, a um, veterinary neurologist. So I'm going to briefly explain it here. The upper motor neuron is quite simply the uh, information coming um, uh, from the motor cortex, or in the case of animals, from the midbrain, uh, where their cell body is up here in the brain, and then the axon comes down the spinal cord. It, some veterinary schools actually teach you all of these tracks, uh, and people diligently learn them without actually learning any kind of function, um, uh, functional knowledge from that, you know, how these are useful. So these are things like the corticospinal tract and the rubrospinal tract. So conveying that motor information down the spinal cord. And if I damage this, then the animal is going to be weak. Makes sense, doesn't it? It's a motor um, uh, nerve and therefore 
oh, sorry, a motor axon, and therefore if you cut it, the animal is going to be weak. But it doesn't affect the reflexes because the reflexes, as you all learnt in basic biology, is just an arc going through the spinal cord. And so uh, the animals will have a normal spinal reflex, or perhaps it might be increased um, because of um, uh, 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 other factors in the spinal cord which are affecting con uh, muscle con tone and control. And if they have any muscle atrophy, then it will be quite uh, late uh, due to disuse. Whereas if we damage this, the cell body um, uh, of the lower motor neuron or the lower motor neuron itself. So what I'm talking about is the cell bodies of the sciatic nerve or the cell bodies of the femoral nerve or the cell bodies of the um, radial nerve. These are all the lower motor neurons. So if I damage those, then one, I damage the reflex arc. So I'll have a decreased reflex. And I'll also uh, I'll have low tone in that muscle and muscle atrophy. So that all seems fairly uh, obvious, but how do we use that to localize the spinal uh, cord lesions? Well, we do this because those nerves going to the limbs are all coming out in one section of the spinal cord. So for the thoracic limbs, they're coming out at C5 to T2. And for the pelvic limbs, they're coming out at L4 to S2. And so if I have reduced spinal, uh, uh, spinal reflexes in the thoracic limb, if I have a reduced withdrawal reflex, in the thoracic limb, then this tells me that the lesion must be in, uh, involving either the spinal cord in this region or the nerves in this region, those, uh, th those so-called brachial plexus um, uh, um, nerves. Uh, if the spinal reflexes are all intact, but I still have spinal, um, spinal cord disease and uh, affecting all four limbs, then it is cranial to that region. If the thoracic limbs are normal and the uh, uh, spinal reflexes are in, all intact, then that tells me that we're going between T3 and L3. Um, and if I have reduced uh, reflexes, especially a withdrawal reflex or a, a patellar reflex in the pelvic limb, then it tells me that I'm affecting either that seg section of the spinal cord slash cord requiner slash um, uh, uh, spinal nerves. So that is how we use um, uh, these reflexes to localize within a region of the spinal cord or to the neuromuscular system. And our final tip is looking at the muscle tone and bulk um, to assess whether or not we're dealing with an upper motor neuron uh, problem or a lower motor neuron problem. Hope to see you there.